why I love it when it gets tough. So I thought I would talk about this today because my brand new single came out. It's called Seven Seconds. And we were really hoping that we'd be on all the Spotify playlists and all the radio stations. And we're not really on any. And it's a bit of a disappointment. But I've been doing this a while now. And I know when things like this happen, I kind of love it. Because it's kind of like that thing that drives you to achieve what you want to achieve in your own way without the approval of everyone else so in this video we're going to a festival in germany called world club dome and the reason i'm telling this story is because five years ago i was the opener at world club dome i'm going to show you a video of what it looks like when you're the opener at world club dome i literally played to 30 people tomorrow I'm headlining the exact same festival. So come with us and let's see if there's more than 30 people there. gonna break when I got out then but I think it was the guy getting the bags out. Humidity awesome. What you got stuck on the mic? Thank you. Something weird on the mic. It was glue. It's off putting. <laughs> it's been there for ages. Thank you mate. Thank Have you. a good Thank night. You. So today's a weird one because we were supposed to get a commercial flight to Ibiza at 2 p.m. and then it got cancelled and then all the other flights got fully booked so we couldn't I mean, there was no way to get to Ibiza apart from getting this jet. It's really annoying. I didn't want to get a jet. It's a waste of money but we had to do it because otherwise we wouldn't be able to make the show. Um, so yeah, we're back in Ibiza. Gonna go to the number one club in the world. Rewire is there as well tonight. And then tomorrow we are going to the festival where I was the opener five years ago and today on the headline. Tomorrow on the headline, let's do this. So we got two random Dutch guys in the house because um, they're, they're from Radio 538, which I'm definitely saying wrong. How do you say it, 538? Radio 538, Radio 538. No, come on, how do you say it in Dutch? Oh. Radio 538. Radio 538. <laughs> a big radio station in the Netherlands. So they're coming to do an interview. And we were late, so they were literally waiting for us when we arrived. You once looked up to big DJs as role models. Now are young talents looking up to you. Do you have any advice for them? The best advice I can give, be ready for it to be hard because it's supposed to be hard. That's why not everybody could do it. And all you have to do is keep going when it's hard and remember why you do it. Because you have to do it because you love it. That's the only thing that will get you through when it's hard. And which part makes it hard? Rejection. Yeah. The rejection will always be there. It doesn't matter whether you're just starting out and it's your first day of DJing or whether you've been doing it for 10 years, there'll always be someone who doesn't want you on the lineup. There'll always be a record label that doesn't like your song. There'll always be a playlist that doesn't want to playlist your song. So the rejection's always there and you've got to get used to it and you've got to learn to turn it from a negative into a positive. Can you still remember your biggest rejection? Mm. I don't know about biggest, but I, I get rejected all the time. I send, I send tracks to other producers with the idea of potentially doing a collab and people just don't reply. And that's, and that's normal. You might think like, whoa, no way, but that's just normal. That's, people send things to me and I don't reply. This is how people are. And you've just got to get comfortable with that. Cool, man. Thanks, Thanks bro. Cool. Thanks. Okay, I want to make uh, one picture with all of you already checked mm. out. Yeah, of course. And then uh, make them. All right, let's roll. Vamos. So the first time I ever came to Ibiza, I was 18 years old. I didn't have any money or anything. Just managed to find enough money for a flight and like enough to get into some nightclubs. So I uh, actually slept on the beach the first time I ever came to Ibiza. Rush, you got keys? That was many, many years ago. But yeah, since then, I actually came here to do DJ gigs for free. I used to come every summer and just like beg it and be like, figure out who I could DJ with, like pay for my own flights and all that, just to sort of get out here because I love it here, get the exposure. And yeah, moral of the story is we are here, how many years later? I don't know, many years later. And 
I have a residency at the number one club. So this shit takes a long time. Rejection's part of the journey. Everyone's gonna say no, fuck off. Keep going. Bro, yeah. stop gatekeeping that t-shirt. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> What's going on? Hi. Right, so James, we ran a pre-save seven seconds competition, winner trip to Ibiza. Could you please name the winner? All right, I'm here at High Ibiza, behind the scenes, and um, I've got a winner for you. So the person who is coming to Ibiza with me this September is Philip Bronk from Berlin, Germany. We're going to reach out to you. Thank you for participating. Who does this? Sick. Boom. Basically, we were running a competition for everyone on Instagram to try and bring someone with us to High Ibiza as like my special guest at some point this month. Um, you've actually missed that, but just go on my Instagram and there'll be another thing like that pretty soon. <laughs> Who does this? Who does this? <laughs> That's crazy. You got this today, yeah. yeah. Is this, we, we, is this, we got this at half ten last night to come out. You're a legend. We you were, you, were, you got the tattoo and go we straight to high. We were watching on YouTube last night and we were like, hang on, is there a reason why we're not at high tomorrow for James? <laughs> and then we were like, yeah, fuck it, we'll just go. <laughs> we're, we're here again in two weeks as well. We've already seen you about nine times yeah. this year, so. Tito will be here in two weeks as well. Okay. Yeah. We do a debrief in the airport? Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, I've got some shit to say, James. You said oh yeah. Oh. Back in the airport, we are headed to Frankfurt, Germany. In a minute, I'm gonna show you what this festival looked like when I played five years ago, and you'll see how many people were not there. Um, we're gonna land and then go straight to the festival, so. Come with us, let's go. Forgot to do a debrief for the show last night, so um, it was a weird one. I don't think the lighting was very good last night. I think some, someone different was doing the lighting than usual, so I wasn't really feeling the vibe. But then at the end of the night, so they always ask me, oh, do you want to play an extra half an hour? And I said yes, because that extra half an hour is always magic. Um, it's always when like the real ravers are there, and I'll just play like totally different styles of music, and it always feels amazing. So. We did that, we did the extra half hour, and then at the end, it, the energy was just wild, like the best people were there. And that was my favorite point of the whole night, was the end. So I think maybe the lighting was ruining the vibe for me a little bit earlier, but then when, when the lights came on at the end, I was like, oh yeah, that's crazy, it was, it was sick. So overall, I'm gonna give it an eight. Ben. Um, lighting, very poor. Um, probably the worst it's been, like I said, well, what James said, I think there's someone different doing it. Um, but yeah, the vibe in there was cool. Um, yeah, the lighting just, for on like a content front, just made it kind of shit. Um, and I think you'll agree. But for me, uh, probably eight, nah, mm, seven, five, seven, five. Wallace? Um, I think Ben's been too kind. Um, the lighting really ruined it for me. Like really, really ruined it for me. Um, so I'm gonna give it a six, just because it really like pissed me off. Because um, it just seemed like there was really little effort 
and for a club like that you should really be giving it your all um, so it's quite disappointing because every week it's usually really fucking sick but yeah disappointing one crowd was sick though lot of hype fam so that was a bonus how did we see three different people with James hype tattoos in the space of like 10 minutes crazy man have you got, you got videos of them insane hype fam rating through the roof Frankfurt let's go Joe's here. Rush is here. Tita's here. Hang on, let me explain why Tita's here. Tita already played at the festival like two hours ago, but we haven't actually been there yet, so we just we've met her in passing in the airport. So Love you. Bye. Have a good flight. Bye Amy. Uh, yeah, so we're about to make our way to World Club Dome. But as soon as we get in the car, I'm gonna show you the video of when I first played there to literally no one. I just want this to be a message that if you want to do something, if you want to achieve something, all you've got to do is keep going. Keep, keep, keep going. Because you might not achieve it today, you might not achieve it tomorrow, you might not even achieve it in four years. But maybe in that fifth year, it's yours. So yeah, let's do this. All right, check this out. So this is the video from when I played this festival in 2019. As you can see, there's literally like less than 100 people there in some of these clips. So it's pretty crazy that we're going from that to actual headlining today. So let's see how many people are actually there. Wild. That was absolutely wild. Um, I'm so glad that we went down to meet all the fans at the end because there were so many of them, so many stereotype shirts. I, I love Germany. And um, sometimes when you're on the stage, you don't really realize the individuals down there and who, and who they are. And when you actually go and meet them, it makes everything even more special. So yeah, that was a crazy show. We're gonna do some interviews and hopefully eat some food. So I'm really hungry. So yeah, stay with us. I've seen that like a camera follows you around. Um, you also show the process of like creating tracks and everything yeah. on YouTube. So how come you show all of this? Because it's obviously super interesting, but not a lot of DJs do that. Well, here's another question to answer your question. Why doesn't why, why don't other people show this? I don't know. Maybe they don't want the others to steal their style or something. I don't know. Well, maybe they don't do it. <gasps> what? <laughs> Oh no, he's spinning back. I'm a lion, I'm a lion. <laughs> he's spinning back right now. Oh my God, I don't know if we can air this. <laughs> You've been to work club Dome many times. Yeah. Um, what do you like the most about the festival? Why do you return every year? It's the people, it's the people. Honestly, every year I'm just amazed at how many people are wearing my merch in the crowd and how many fans there are here. And I don't come to Germany that much. I, every time I do, and especially Frankfurt, I, I just love all the people. 
day to lay, 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 lay. Um, I'm gonna give it an eight. The crowd were insane, but the build of the stage and just the position of everything wasn't great. From where I was standing, it was hard to feel the energy of the people because I don't know, they build this really big stage and the DJ's really far away from the crowd, but it doesn't make any sense when you could be a lot closer. That's just how I like things anyway, but anyway, yeah, Ben. Um, crowd was sick, stage was dead. <laughs> Seven. Out of 10. Uh, I'm gonna give it an eight out of 10. Uh, crowd was good, stage was nice design, but a bit limited. But dragged up by the most comfortable t shirt in the world, the No Sleep Gang oh, t shirt. Nice. Stereotype Global. It's thanks to you that they're sold out. What can I say? That's how we advertise. <laughs> Rash? Six. Crowd epic. Yeah, that's what I've got to say about people. You're comfortable in your new t shirt? I'm not wearing one. That's why I'm just six. No, it was a six because I wasted my time doing sound check for equipment that wasn't even in the sound check. Rush flew in. Rush, Rush went from Ibiza, from the club, straight to the airport so he could get to Frankfurt early this morning to come and do a sound check. Tested the equipment. He was like, yeah, this is perfect. Keep these here for James's setup. Then went back to the hotel, went back to the festival later on. Then they put the set up there for my set. It's a completely different set of equipment. So he just wasted the whole day of his life. Anyway, what I wanted to say to end this video, basically, the secret to achieving anything is just to never give up. Like, you can do anything if you just never give up. If you want to be a music producer and you make a song today, it's probably going to be shit. You make one tomorrow, it's probably going to be shit. If you do it every single day, for a year, that's 365. One of them might be good. One of them might not be good. Keep doing it, do it for like five years. And you just, you, your odds of getting somewhere are drastically increased. And I think that's one thing doing this festival today, five years on, has like opened my eyes to the progress that's been made in five years. And I don't think I've done anything crazy to achieve that. I just think I've never fucking stopped. And you can do the same. So that brings us to the end of a fire episode of Moving Differently. My track 7 Seconds is out right now. You should stream it on Spotify. And if you're a real hype fan, you can buy it on Beatport Transition. Yeah,